I'm Jaffa Khan from the NIH in the United States, uh, and it is my great honor to be invited to GIS Valves to give this plenary talk. Um, I hope you've all had a great conference, uh, and I'd like to give you an introduction to transcatheter electrosurgery, which I think is the cutting edge of structural heart intervention, uh, and I hope you enjoy this talk. I am an inventor and patents assigned to my employer relevant to this presentation, and I also describe off-label uses of uh, medical devices. To give you an introduction, um, transcatheter electrosurgery really is key to, to novel innovation. So I work in the Letterman lab uh, at the NIH, and uh, these are the new procedures that we've invented from the lab. And you can see that I've marked many of these involve uh, transcatheter electrosurgery, which is, which is part of the program that I was um, very keenly involved with. So what is it? Transcatheter electrosurgery is the concentration of current onto tissue. That tissue then heats up rapidly to 100 degrees. Uh, so the water inside the cells boil and the tissue vaporizes. And that essentially affects cutting. And we do that through guide wires and microcatheters. And the key here is to insulate the guide wire through its course inside the blood so that the majority of current is transferred to the tissue uh, where it affects cutting. And I'm going to talk about three main applications of this technology. First, transcaval, then basilica, then lampoon. So transcaval access, this is where the story began. This is uh, this transcaval allows large bore arterial access when transfemoral access is not possible. So if you look at the cartoon on the on the left hand panel, a snare is positioned here in the aorta and then a guide catheter directs a guide wire which is electrified across the walls of the IVC and the aorta. So then uh, that guide wire is snared in the aorta and taken up. Uh, microcatheters are advanced over, enabling a, a stiff guide wire across uh, a large sheath, and then you can perform TAVA or, or TIVA or insert an impeller, anything you need for large bore arterial access. On the way out, you close the arteriotomy with a plug. Here is the actual procedure. So we plan on CT where we need to perform our arteriotomy. Uh, we then perform an angiogram in the lab to try and match what we see on CT and find our target. A um, snare is then positioned in the aorta uh, and in two you check in two projections. And then a guide wire is electrified across the um, IVC and into the aorta. A sheath is then advanced you perform your procedure, and then on the way out, a plug is deployed and a final angiogram is performed. You can see on this final angiogram that there's a residual fistula, but no leak into the retroperitoneal space. And this is the key physiology behind the procedure. So when there is a hole in both the IVC and the aorta, there is a fistula cross with no retroperitoneal bleeding. And this happens because the retroperitoneal place, space has greater pressure than the IVC. Here's an experiment showing a hole in the aorta without a hole in the IVC with bleeding. And in this case, there is a hole in the IVC and all the red dye goes across from the aorta into the IVC without any retroperitoneal bleed. And this physiology makes this procedure safe. The latest data that we have is from this paper we published recently in Jack Intervention, uh, comparing transcaval to transaxillary uh, and transfemoral as a reference. And the key here is that transcaval had less stroke than transaxillary and greater number of patients discharged directly home. So in addition to it being ergonomically more feasible because you're at the legs, you're not absorbing excess radiation. And in addition to being uh, uh, performed under local anesthesia, if you like, it is also um, quite likely safer in terms of stroke and better for the patient in terms of discharge home. So I really feel this should be the primary alternative access um, for TAVA when transfemoral is not possible. 
So moving on to Basilica, um, this is the second big problem with Tava as far as I see it, is coronary obstruction. Although it's rare with an incidence of just under 1%, when it occurs, it can be fatal. In up to 40 to 50% of cases, despite attempted rescue with PCI or cabbage. So we invented this procedure called Basilica, which electrifies and lacerates the leaflet. So a snare is positioned in the LVOT, a guide wire is electrified through the base of that leaflet into that snare and that wire is snared. The loop is then electrified and while the catheters are pulled, lacerating that leaflet down the center line. And when TAVR is performed, the leaflet splays away from the coronary artery, allowing blood to flow through it. So where does the evidence come from? We performed a, an FDA early feasibility study in 30 patients who were all at high risk of coronary obstruction. Basilica was successful in 28 of those 30 patients and really survival, freedom from obstruction, uh, freedom from an emergency intervention was really very good. At 30 days, there was one uh, death, there were three strokes, and at one year, there was no excess complications from Basilica. Basically, if you perform Basilica, you don't need to worry about complications um, down the road. So what's the story? Uh, so all, overall, good safety uh, and good efficacy, but we need to investigate the story behind stroke a little bit more. And so we, we investigated this in a real world registry of 214 patients from 25 centers. Really from exit from the cath lab, Basilica was successful in just over 94% of patients, showing the outcomes in the real world closely match those to the, uh, to the early feasibility study in highly selected centers. And the key take home here is if you look at 30 day outcomes, mortality and stroke at both 2.8% are exactly very similar to what we see in the TVT registry in patients who are not at risk of coronary obstruction. And the key here is you're taking patients who are at risk of coronary obstruction, who may have up to a 50% mortality, and you're making their risk the same as patients who are not at risk of coronary obstruction with this, with this excess procedure. And I really think that is, is, is a big step forward for these patients. In summary, Basilica appears safe and effective at preventing TAVA-related coronary artery obstruction. The final thing that I want to talk about is Lampoon. Uh, and uh, this, is, this is similar to Basilica, but for the mitral valve. Now, in TMVR, LVOT obstruction is a major problem. It, it affects up to 50% of all cases. It again has a high mortality. Um, and it is a major cause for screen failure for all the new transcatheter mitral valve replacement devices. The lampoon is a procedure that mimics the surgical standard, which is resection of the anterior mitral leaflet and preservation of the cords. It performed immediately before TMVR. And you can see from the TE over here, the leaflet coapsis and systole, so preventing torrential TMVR uh, before, uh, but torrential mitral regurgitation before TMVR, um, and the leaflet splays after TMVR, allowing blood flow through the left ventricular outflow tract. The evidence comes from this early feasibility study we performed uh, of 30 patients uh, who are all at risk of LVOT obstruction. Lampoon was successful in 100%, irrespective of calcium pattern or anatomy. And there was no LVOT obstruction on exit from the laboratory in the majority of these patients. There was no stroke at 30 days. And mortality, if you look at these comparative figures, if you do nothing and the patient gets LVOT obstruction, the 30-day survival is only 38%. With transatrial, so a hybrid surgical approach, Survival is still pretty poor at 73%, showing these patients are quite frail with a lot of extra comorbidities. However, with Lampoon, at 30 days, the survival in this sick patient cohort was remarkably good at 93%, showing that if you can do all these things entirely transcatheter and minimally invasive, uh, the patients do better. And we've really modified the technique to, to make it a lot simpler 
um, for the majority of patients who will need these procedures, particularly for valve and ring and valve in valve TMVR. And this is a tip to base technique where we perform transeptal access, uh, put across a deflectible sheath, and then create an, a veno arterial rail with a guide wire snared out of the femoral artery, and then introduce this kinked guide wire in between the two catheters, which concentrates that charge again on that anterior mitral leaflet. And in the top panel, you can see this being performed uh, just uh, in an old, in a failed bioprosthetic valve. The, uh, uh, the guide wire is electrified as it's pulled up to the base of the sewing ring, cutting that leaflet from tip to base. And here it's performed in a ring, again, prior to TMVR, the guide wire is electrified as the catheters are pulled up from the base up to the ring. So in summary for Lampoon, Lampoon can be performed in various iterations. The simplest iteration being tip to base lampoon, um, and it's guided by the anatomy, it can prevent TMVR related LVOT obstruction. So, to bring the whole talk to a close, transcatheter electrosurgery uses current through guide wires to vaporize tissue. It's a really nimble tool, it has multiple applications. Uh, I've described three of these applications today. That's transcaval access for large bore arterial access, basilica, which prevents coronary obstruction from TAVA, and lampoon, which prevents LVOT obstruction from TMVR. And to close off the talk and the session, I really want to be provocative in saying this is a tool that you can use um, and make bespoke treatments for your patients. Many of these procedures were invented in the last five years using transcatheter electrosurgery. So really think what you can perform for your patients and what we as a field can, can invent using this technology in the next five years. I think this is a really exciting field and I look forward to being part of it in the future. Uh, thank you very much and happy to take any questions.